Welcome to Bell Brothers Brewing. Engineers talking about beers. I'm Curtis. And I'm Cody. And today we're doing the B3 Box Brew. That box brew is going to be the Zombie Fest. Extra Oktoberfest by Brewer's Best. Boom. It was almost alliteration because it kind of all ran at the end there. The B3 box brew by Brewer's Best. Zombie Fest Oktoberfest. <laughs> <laughs> and as for the normal, we have instructions. instructions. So I'm going to read their little blurb here. We have Zombie Fest. Big malt character and light bitterness combined to create this delicious extra Oktoberfest recipe. There's no doubt this brew will bring life to your fall festivities. <laughs> the important statistics are IBUs 15 to 20, ABV 6.9 to 7.4. Mm, that's pretty happy. Uh, original gravity 1.068 to 1.071. Final gravity 1.014 to 1.018. So, most interesting aspect of that, right, was the ABVs. Yeah, it was a nice strong one. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the IBU is actually a little lower than I was expecting out of like a, that high alcohol. I was thinking but, bitterness. Yeah, but it's supposed to be a Mars in Oktoberfest style. But I'm going to guess they're using, uh, based off that final gravity, some adjuncts, some easy to digest things mm -hmm. to just get straight alcohol, not really worry so much about getting body. Right. Um, so you would still get a balance between that lower IBU with the malt flavor. So let's get into ingredients. First up, we got fermentables. 6.6 .6 pounds of light malt extract, or liquid malt extract. That's the heavy stuff, so I'm glad yeah. you were uh, pulling that out first. Although they always put it on the bottom. What's the heavy stuff? So, put the <laughs> so Ooh, light malt extract, bam. The core of every uh, yeah, right? box brew that we've done. Which is the best part. I mean, that's, that's the extract aspect of the extract brewing, right? Mm -hmm. And it cuts down that giant, like, two and a half, three hours of mash rinsing, sparging, yep, <laughs> just boom, open the can, you're good to go. Can numero uno, and can number two, boom, two cans. We have one pound of amber dry malt extract. Dry malt extract, amber, huh? So it's a little darker, uh, the lava bond on this is 10 right now, so yep. we're gonna get some color out of that. Well, it's, it's supposed much. to be an amber colored beer, so I think this is gonna be a Marzen, it's like a strong Marzen style. All right, after that we have one pound of corn sugar. Corn sugar. Corn sugar. Wow, on top of what would be considered bottling sugar, right? So more pumping, right? This is where that ABV is. That's yep. this video. It's that one pound of corn sugar. Yeah. Right there. Uh, specialty grains. We have one pound of Caramunic Light. Caramunic Light. That's basically going to be what aromatics more so than anything else, because there's not yeah. much. Like being that it's a light malt, there's not a whole lot of color involved in that one. So yeah, it'll be a hint of flavor. Cara typically points towards more like mouthfeel or head retention kind of deal, which would be important here. You want that nice foamy head on your right. uh, German beers. Four ounces of aroma. Yeah, crushed aroma malt. But it does have a lot more. It's very darker. Dark. Yeah, yeah. So, it, so uh, beyond just saying aroma malt, I'm gonna say that this is probably a lot of your coloring agent right here. Yeah. Um, that's gonna add a lot of dark. Yeah. That that's where your ruby reds, your kind of darker browns and ambers are gonna bring in. Hops. We have one ounce of Columbus. One ounce Columbus from y Yakima Chief. What's the uh, alpha acid on those? And we've got a 15.8% alpha acid. Wow. Ooh. Strong hops. That is a strong hop. Um, aromas are black pepper, dank, and red fruit. I don't know what a red fruit smells like. That seems like a weird way to put a... Well, like flavor it, maybe, but like... Well, because like red fruit, you got apples are red. Um, raspberries, strawberries. Right, so like smells like red fruit is a bit of a stretch personally. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of red fruits that don't smell or taste anything like. <laughs> yeah. Typical beer styles are AP, uh, IPAs, Imperial Ales, and Pale Ales. They know that the alpha acid kind of pushes it into those stronger, hoppier beers, and yet this time we're going to use it as, obviously as our bittering agent. I'm going to assume, yeah, yeah. when you get further down, it's just your bittering. That's yeah. it. But so still, 15%? Wow! That's going to be strong. I'm, I'm surprised that their IBUs are so 15 low. 15 to 20, yeah. One, one ounce of that should be a lot more than 15 to 20. I almost want to put this in a calculator just to see if it's right? wrong. Uh, I, I, yeah, we will. All right. After that, we have one sachet of yeast. One sachet of yeast. What um, kind of yeast? This one is Saf Lager S23. Oh, so, we got a lager. It's a dry lager yeast. Ideal temperatures between 53 and 59% Fahrenheit. So, are we lagering? I guess we're lagering. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we got Caps Priming Sugar. Priming Sugar, which 
Because we're, not we're not gonna use. So we're gonna pump up the ABVs just a little bit more, make sure that we've got a, a little bit more sugar in there. Green bag. We actually have a grain sock this time. Yeah, Check we got it a sock. <laughs> Although somebody tied it into a knot, we also don't have inspectors. There's not inspector tags in here. So when something's screwed up, we can't blame the inspectors this time. Caught on to us. Right in there, inspection tags. So I have to stop putting those in there. <laughs> a, little, a little extra special thing there. We got some. Yeah. What because are those? Some, like some zombified stickers. Uh, Liz is gonna love them. Uh, yeah. We're gonna put these over the beer fridge because that looks that looks tight. Yeah, yeah, so, cool so, so they got some cool little stickers on there, or but probably to go on the bottles. Most likely probably bottle covers. Yeah. But since we're not doing bottles, we're not gonna worry about that. But these are pretty cool. I'm gonna spread them around. We'll put them out or something like that. Mm -hmm. Instruction number one: read, read all of the recommended procedures before you begin. If you don't read the instructions, you're gonna make mistakes, like the Bell Brothers, and then like having a lager when you're expecting an ale, or fermenting at different temperatures, or freezing your beer. The, some of those things like that. So make sure you read your instructions. That's important, and you'll still make a mistake. But it's okay. <laughs> and sanitize all brewing equipment. Sanitize. Go buy Star Sands. Put it in a spray bottle, keep it around, make sure you clean your stuff, that's important. It's 90% of the brew process. Step three, steep grains. We're gonna take the sack, we're gonna fill it with grains, we're gonna make <laughs> cool tea of it. You're gonna do temperatures between 150 and 165 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. That's important because you don't wanna get above 170 degrees Fahrenheit. If you get above 170, you start to extract tannins from the grain husks. So even though they pre-ground them, when you put that in there, you get too hot, you get weird off flavors out of your grains, even though we're just using an extract, a little grain sock out of that. Step number four, start the boil. Bring your wort to a gentle rolling boil. Add all of the LME, DME, and corn sugar to boiling wort. Stir carefully. Step number five, follow schedule. As directed on the brew day schedule, right. Uh, slowly sprinkle the hops into the boiling wort. Be careful not to let the wort boil over the pot. Provided brew day schedule. Note the time the hops were added and keep your brew on schedule. On that one, right, there's two different pieces on that. One, when you're adding your hops, sprinkle it gently and paying attention to it. If you don't, the hops will hit. Now you've created the nucleation sites, right? Yep. And the beer will, well, the boiling <laughs> wort will definitely foam over, especially if you're doing it in a smaller pot, yep. right? In our case, we've got some room to grow, so it's not so bad. But uh, if you do it in a small pot that's like, you know, the only two and a half gallons that you've got, that is definitely going all over your kitchen. You're gonna have sticky, burnt wort all over your all stove over. The second part of that that I want to point out was paying attention to the time that you put your hops in, right? Mm -hmm. And in this case, we've only got the one ounce of hops. And that is gonna be used as our bittering hop, like we were talking about when we pull them out. Bittering hop is done for 60 minutes. Why are we doing, how are we working that? What does that do science-wise for, for the 60 minutes? Well, the important thing here is that at 60 minutes, you have completely er eradicated all flavors and aromas of the hop. All you're gonna do is isomerize those alpha acids and turn them into the bittering agent that you're looking for when you taste and drink a beer, that bitter part of the beer. Step number six, cool wort and transfer. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Cool the wort off, put it into your transfer fermentation bucket. Most of the time you're gonna use an immersion chiller, right? It's a coil of copper as you can put like cold hose water through, hopefully cold hose, hose water. Uh, and then you're gonna put that inside of your wart, stir it around for a bit, and you're dropping your temperature from that boiling, right? 212 degrees down to 70-ish degrees Fahrenheit. In this case, it wants you to get down to approximately 60 degrees. This is a lager, it's gotta be a little more chilled. Mm. Uh, avoid transferring heavy sediments, crub, from the brew pot. Crub will not affect the flavor of your beer too much, but it does give a bunch of gunk in the bottom of your fermenter that you then have to deal with next time you transfer. So the less you can pull, the less you have to worry about in your next transfer, and then so on and so forth down the line. Step number seven, add water. Add clean water, 60, 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit to the fermenter to bring it to approximately five gallons volume. Clean water. If you didn't watch our brew process or science video last month, the basis of that is filtration, right? What are our three types of filtration, Cody? Charcoal filtration, reverse osmosis, and going to the store and buying distilled water. <laughs> distilled water. We use activated charcoal filters, but it's important to make sure that you have filtered clean water. If you just say, take some like you know old bathtub water or some hose water, you might have some weird bacteria. You're gonna have chlorine and you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, it's just not it's not worth it. So don't do that. Make sure you filter your water, put that in there, and top off your beer. And step number eight, pitch yeast. Sprinkle the contents of the yeast section. Do not rehydrate. Typically for a lager, what you're gonna be doing is actually trying to get more cells than you have. Like you want a heavier, heftier pitch. Big, big starter. Yeah, for your lagers. Um, and that's because they, they take longer to get going, they're longer to work, and you wanna reduce the risk of infection 
uh, by pitching a larger set. That way they kind of beat out any of the bacteria or weird stuff that might get into the beer uh, during transfers or while you're trying to put the top on to the ferment there. I mean, there, mm -hmm. there's some risk of infection all the way along the process unless you did it like in a clean room. It'd be kind of weird. Yeah. I mean, you could. I mean, you could do it, but that's a lot of money to spend to do that. You're not a home brewer if you have a clean room in your house, right? There, there's something well, wrong with you. You're a home brewer. You're just probably up to some other weirdness. <laughs> you might be cooking some, you know, blue crystals, right? <laughs> you, you might be going by the name of... No. And you, uh, you don't do that in a clean room. You do that in a, uh, uh, what's it called, an RV in the middle of the desert. RV in the middle of the desert. <laughs> but he even cleaned the RV in the middle of the desert, right? <laughs> Step number nine, primary fermentation. Wort will begin to ferment within 24 to 48 hours. You may notice CO2 releasing out of the airlock. No bubbling is evident on day two of fermentation. Take a gravity reading for the sanitized hydrometer. Gravity has dropped below OG reading, then fermentation is taking place. All is well, don't worry. Most of the time. Right? Most like like sometimes you get an infection and your OG still drop like your your gravity still drops. It's just the bacteria or the infection eating the sugar, well, not I mean your yeast, it's technically but, fermentation. It's just right, fermentation it's, you don't want. <laughs> right. It's the wrong kind of fermentation. What you want to see is that nice strong bubble. All over the lager it might be a little slower and you're looking to keep. I, I would necessarily wouldn't measure it. Like if you see bubbles in your chamber, your airlock, you're probably okay. It's better to just let that ride for a while rather than risk opening and infecting at that point when you start putting in your yeah. your But if you've got no bubbles or anything, you may want to check. Keep going. It'll take 10 to 14 days and it should drop into the final gravity range. If it is not, give it a little longer, give it a little stir. Step 10, secondary lagering. You're going to transfer the beer to a clean sanitized five gallon carboy. Lower the temperature one to three degrees per day until it reaches 35 to 42 degrees Fahrenheit or just set your thing to that temperature and don't worry about it. So what are they doing in that process, Cody, in that secondary? What do you, what so, do you like what's the thought behind it and then why or, or how, how is our adjustment in that? The idea behind bringing this temperature down slowly is not to temperature shock your yeast. By the time you've gone into your secondary lagering and all that, most of your yeast has fallen out. You've really only got the toughest yeasts still floating around in there and they're not going to be doing a whole lot anyway. Once you drop down to that 35 to 42 degrees range, they're going to do a little but not much. You're mostly just letting the natural chemistry of what's already in the beer kind of take place at a slow controlled rate to really mellow out the flavors and get that smooth clean lager profile that people are looking for. Although as a warning I wouldn't go beyond three weeks on any one of your yeasts. Mm -hmm. So on a yeast cake as that builds up if you go beyond three weeks they start to eat Each dead other. yeast, yeah. right? So the active yeast eat the dead yeast and the dead yeast put off those weird kind of meaty uh, flavors. Yeah. And so now all of a sudden you're getting off flavors from your beer that you're now waiting to get rid of off flavors. So don't do that. So if you end up finding yourself in a situation where you're going into that three weeks aspect of lagering, right, on the same yeast cake, take it, transfer as much as you can into a second primary, right, another fermentation bucket, leave that cake behind, clean it out. There's yeast still active floating around in that and let them go for another week or two weeks or something and kind of help finish up what's going on. And if it's really stuck, like after two weeks oh. and you barely got anything, get new yeast. Yeah. Put new yeast in there, let it go. So there is something to note here. It has a brood as an ale section for if you mm. don't have the equipment to lager your beer. Which so is kind of important. I mean, obviously we can because we have the temperature control chamber, but if you're just doing it in your house, like unless you keep your house at a balmy 55 degrees, <laughs> <laughs> Celsius, or uh, Fahrenheit, 55 oh, and, degrees And then Fahrenheit. you're willing to drop it down to 42. Right, yeah, or, or 35, months. right? So 42 yeah, to 35. Yeah, really weeks. freeze that sucker down. <laughs> if you really burst all the pipes in your walls, you can do this as a lager <laughs> with your air conditioner. <laughs> Brewer's Best recommends lagering this recipe to achieve the true lager character of the beer style. However, if you are not properly equipped to lager your beer, the included yeast will perform well when fermented as an ale. When fermenting as an ale between 64 and 72, try to keep the beer on the cooler end of the temperature range and allow for some additional time for the lager yeast to ferment down to final gravity. If possible, rack to a secondary fermenter for two weeks prior to bottling. Although this method is not as accurate as temperature controlled lagering equipment, most climates will provide a seasonal window that will allow you to lager beer. If you want to know about bottling or want to listen to those last processes, go back, check out some of our other videos, or shoot us a comment and we'll be happy to do a specific video on bottling your beer. Um, but we don't do it, we go to kegs, so no. What we're going to do from here is brew the beer, right? And uh, because it's a lager, luckily we have time in the rest in the, in the schedule, schedule to actually do it. So we have it lagering, we're going to lager the beer, and then we're going to move to a taste. What you're going to see is us doing the tasting in like a month. <laughs> <laughs> but for you, it'll be one minute. Yeah. And we're, we're here. Welcome back. 
We are to the B3 box brew that is the Zombie Fest. Zombie Fest Imperial Oktoberfest Marzen style. Well, let's get into it. I think we got good efficiency yeah. with it. What do you smell, Greg? Not a lot, honestly. I don't yeah. smell a whole bunch here. A little hint of, like, to me, it's taste it smells green that's much nutty green yeah hint of nut maybe nutty. uh to me nuttiness tends to fall into the green just because my palate my 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 sense just pushes it that way oops it's a little hot hot really mm -hmm. yeah um, with the imperial yeah little little fusel alcohol solvent like yeah the bitterness kind of helps it's to really enhance bitter. Yeah, it's really bitter, bitter and hot and it really pumps up the hot alcohol i'd say drinkability wise this is struggling yeah this is this not great um, and, and it's not that it's like style-wise wrong. It's not horrible. The, the flavors are all there. Just an imperial marzen, I think, is is a wrong call. And the hops and are a little strong. The hops are a little strong. I think we got a little bit of that chlorine, but it's not over the chlorine. I'm not getting that tingle on the sides of my tongue that really gives me that like chlorine in the beer flavor. But really, it comes down to hoppy and fusel alcohol. Yeah. That just aren't really right in a Marzen. As far as a Marzen or Oktoberfest beer, I'm gonna three? Even just raw enjoyability too. Yeah, it's not good. You know what? Hopheads might like this. Maybe, cause it's even not a very good hop. It's not hop flavored, it's right. just the bitter. It's kind of leaning into sugared broccoli almost cause you do have some residual sugar. Fair it's not bit. super dry. There is some residual sugar. It's got a nice body, but you got that fusel alcohol and yeah. that hop just ugh. I think they made a really bad choice in that bittering hop across the board. It's just too strong. They need to back that up. And the Imperial, if it was balanced well enough with maybe some mm -hmm. more malt character, yeah, would probably a make thing. a big difference. Because there's no malt character. There is not, not bready, not toasty, not caramely. I think this is mostly the recipe, not, not us. Yeah, I don't yeah. think there's much in the I, way of well, obviously it was process lager. errors. Right. Yeah. I mean, that was an interesting bit too, right? That caught us off guard. It's lagered, and I'm going to tell you, there's no yeast flavor. It's got no. a super clean yeast flavor. Yeah. Uh, so it definitely did lager properly. I don't think there was much in the way of process errors here. No. It's but really just... Because the complaint is the malt character that needs to get bumped up and the bitterness of the hop at 60 minutes. And those two things, it's a recipe error. Yeah. That's that's not a process error. That's not, you know, our chemicals in the water. That's not weird fermentations because the yeast would pop out on that one. No, it truly is that they needed to back off the bittering hop if they're going to let the fusel alcohols run and add a, just a tad bit more of like that toasty, bready note to the, yeah. the malts. Well, even then, like we gave this time. So the mm -hmm. fusel alcohols should have gone away, but they didn't. So I'm going to say that this one was a wicked failure. From Massive failure. Like... We have five not, gallons of this, and I'm pretty sure it's all going down the drain. But uh, maybe I can get it to a hop head or something like Dad or Uncle Eric, Bob. Even, you know, there you go. Pass off on Ethan. Don't, pass it on the brother-in-law. Don't we'll diss do. my brother. <laughs> Ethan doesn't drink real. He beer drinks anyways. paint thinner and think it, <laughs> thinks it tastes good. <laughs> and we can pass this off on him, and he'll be like, "Oh, that's all right." That's accurate. Sorry, right. Ethan. <laughs> Uh, well, and Ethan is one of our more dedicated viewers, and so in that sense, this is going to you, Ethan. <laughs> have a nice day. We don't like it. It's all yours. <laughs> but instead, we have Ethan, the honorary bell brother, who will uh, drink anything. Well, yeah, he'll drink paint thinner, so he gets this shit beer. Uh, but just so you know, if you're at the homebrew store and you see the zombie fest, you're like, oh, that sounds good. Don't do it. Don't do it, it won't work. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Don't waste your money. It's bad beer. I mean, you got bad beer. You got bad beer. He's got bad beer. And, and you know that, when you got bad beer, you got bad beer. And that is the wisdom of Madden bestowed upon you for a second time. Thanks for visiting us here at Bell Brothers Brewing. Engineers talking about beers. Cheers. Cheers. But not with this beer. So, I want to cut in here real quick. I know this is kind of oddball for our review since you just watched us review the video real time. Um, funny story, as a prank basically, my mom was in, our mom was in uh, in the house and we're like, I was like, hey, I got the zombie fest on tap. Why don't I pour her half a glass of that? And I'll watch you just like wig out and like, oh, oh, uh, it's too bitter, it doesn't taste good. What the hell, this is a bad beer, right? Mm -hmm. And so I gave it to mom, she tasted it, and she went, this is actually pretty good. Like it doesn't taste like much, but yeah, this is not bad. And I was like, wait, what? So I grabbed a beer and I was like, okay, yeah, actually this is a lot better. So with that, it's been a week, yep. a week since we did the actual review and maybe it was just the first pull. Maybe it was the first pull, maybe you just needed another week to kind of stabilize because it looks a lot better than it did before. <laughs> right? So, uh, 
bring these up here. Previously when we did the review it was pretty foggy and it's still a little foggy but it is far more, this looks like a nice beer. Like it's got <laughs> a hint of haze, but it looks nice. You got the weird Trump stuff on the bottom maybe. Yeah. I, I mean, I did pull and clear the line ahead of time, but you know, sometimes it just, just needs a little time. Yeah. So we give it another week. Based on that review, I said, you know what? Cody, you and I need to get together. We need to do another like quickie take. Well, you gotta give everything a fair review. You know, it's no fair to be like, well, Zombie Fest is bad. And then it turns out it was okay. And you're like, well, I'm sticking with my previous review because I said it was bad. <laughs> Come back, redo it, and go, yeah, it's actually, it's all right. Yeah, I think all right. I'm getting a lot more of the bready notes. Yeah, and you little bready, a little caramely. It is still just really bitter. Yeah, this reminds me more of like an Imperial IPA than a Marsden. Right. In a lot of ways. <laughs> like if you came at this and said, here's a red Imperial IPA, I'd be like, yeah, a little bit of sugared broccoli, but you're close. Right. Well, <laughs> it could be more interesting, but not a bad Imperial red IPA. And more interesting is definitely the right way. It still doesn't sing out on any one note. Like the bitterness is there, and then it doesn't really bring home. It's got more caramel or malt sweetness to it, but I, I still don't feel like the malt's bringing another part to the story. I think they'd be more noticeable if we didn't have the hops kind of coming in. Right. You're like, okay, there's the hint of malt sweetness, and it's like hop bitterness. This comes in right at the end, it just completely knocks out anything else coming from the malt. But with that, I want to know. Is it better than we tasted it the last time? Significantly. Significantly. And with that, you want to give it another beer score? Sure. Five-ish? Yeah. It five -ish. I was thinking a six, personally, because uh, yeah. I, I do want, I, I do like, it's drinkable, right? It's supposed to be a fast beer, so you're supposed to be able to just kind of like, yeah, drink the beer. Like I said, it does, if you told me this was a Mars and I'd call you a dirty liar. Right. <laughs> Without a question. Right? This does not fit, if you gave no. this to a judge and said, this is a Mars and they give you a 13. Yeah, it's it's a way too bitter for it. It's not yeah. enough malt's character to it. It looks close, you know, reasonably. It, it like looks it looks like a Mars, and it's a little dark, and would be more right ruby than orange. But but it's it's still not a stop. No. Right, and the bitterness no, no. kills the drinkability across the mm -hmm. board. So it's better. I said it's a six because I can actually drink it. And yeah. It's not like ugh, spit that out. Like it's not mercy score, but it's not good for style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, with that. Now you know that the Bell Brothers get it wrong, they want to come back. Sometimes we get it right, but in case that it uh, you know, gets better, I always want to give it a fair shake. Yep. Thanks for visiting us here at Bell Brothers Brewing. It's been Engineers talking about beers. Cheers. Stupid lot should make you leave the key because now you're back. recording. Now you're back to bother me. Well, now go walk out the door. <laughs> All right, I'm done now. This is what happens when we get too drunk. This is why we're supposed to do beer reviews before we do beer challenges. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, nasty beer. <laughs> Please don't actually. Maybe less drunk. There might be some redeeming factor no. in there, but it's not no, good. Because more drunk, I is, taste less. No, this, yes, <laughs> that this is, is awful. Like, this is like, ugh. Good fucking bye. That is bad. That is terrible. Uh,